Hey, fifth grade mathematicians. Uh, how are you? I'm in the building right now. Of course, I'm having wireless issues. Uh, we are getting into lesson 14. Yep, 14. We are going to be continuing to model multiplication of two fractions. Uh, <clears throat> the fractions are going to become a little bit more complicated. We're still finding fractions of fractions or multiplying uh, one fraction by another. I have a kiddo walking by and I don't want the kiddo on the camera. Okay, cool. Um, so let's just take a look. We're continuing to model. So model, 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 model. Ready, go. Here we go. Launching fully into lesson 14. We're taking a look at these expressions. One third of three fifths. Please keep in mind that one third of three fifths is equal to one third times three fifths. So here you guys, we're looking at a fraction of a fraction. And we <clears throat> can first go ahead and calculate that. If we're just going to do traditional algorithms straight across multiplication, we're looking at 1 times 3 upstairs in the numerator, 1 times 3, and then downstairs we're looking at 3 times 5. That's what's going on multiplication-wise. Let's evaluate this. Well, 1 times 3 is 3, and 3 times 5 is 15. So the answer here is 3 fifteenths, but we're going to support that and prove that using a model. And all of these great models, when we're finding fractions of fractions, start with a rectangle. Uh, many of you had the opportunity to draw your own model, so you can kind of empathize with me sometimes when the rectangles aren't perfect. Uh, so first we're going to show uh, this one third. Um, and honestly, you guys, it really doesn't matter if I do start with rows or columns because we're finding a fraction of a fraction. So I'm going to show one third. I'm going to shade in one third. That's pretty basic. Okay, so I've shaded in one third. And now I need to shade in three fifths. In order to do that, I need to lie five rows on top of my thirds separating this rectangle into five we'll pretend that these are even rows do you see how we have one two three four five okay so here's the big leap between lesson 13 and lesson 14. i want a nicer i'm gonna do red um now i need to shade three out of my five rows so i need to shade this row this row and this row so i'm gonna shade three, one, two, and three rows. Keep in mind this entire rectangle is one whole, right? This entire rectangle is one whole. What we're interested in is we're finding a fraction of a fraction. What I'm interested in is here, you guys, where the blue and the red intersect. This, what I'm circling right here, is one-third of three-fifths. So I'm going to circle that intersection, and then I'm going to consider, hmm, what fraction is this? Well, where the blue and the red intersect, that's one, two, three rectangles. So my numerator is three. And this entire large rectangle is now separated into three, one, two, three, by one, two, three, four, five um, rows. So the denominator is 15. Now this rectangle separated into 15 smaller rectangles. Is this number and this number the same? Indeed. So we are all good. I have showed uh, a beautiful model of 3 fifteenths represented um, <clears throat> by representing what happens when we multiply one third by three fifths. Okie dokie. Um, now I'm going to do this. We have one half of six eighths. You guys know that's equal to one half times six eighths. Let's just go ahead and do that multiplication. Upstairs we have one times six. Downstairs we have two times eight. Let's evaluate this. What is one times six? Well, it is six. What is two times eight? Well, it is 16. And you guys, when we are modeling, don't even, don't you dare simplify. Just leave it like that, okay? And I'll show you why. So now let's go ahead and model that. So um, I'm going to draw a rectangle. This one's going to have to be a little bit smaller. Um, I'm going to draw a really nice rectangle. And first, I'm going to show one half. Ready? Don't look away. Oh, you missed it. I already cut that into two equal pieces. I've now shaded in one half. 
Don't overthink it, you guys. We're just shading in one half. Okay. <clears throat> but I'm looking for six eighths of one half. So now what I have to do is I have to lay hopefully eight equal rows on top of my one half. So I have two, we have three, we have four, we have five, we have six, and then seven eighths. And I need a new color because as you guys can see, we have one half shaded in already. Now I need to shade in six eighths. I need to shade one, two, three, four, five, six rows. I need to shade in six eighths. So I'm going to do that with another color. I'm using green to shade in now six eighths. And you can see that this uh, six eighths is going in the opposite direction as our one half. So our one half was columns, but now our six eighths is rows. And that is now shaded. I've shaded six eighths. And now what we need to look at <coughs> is where do the six eighths, where does the green intersect with the red? Well, I can see that green intersecting with the red right here, making this kind of icky green red blob. <coughs> so I've circled the intersection of one half and six eighths. Now I have to think about what is this fraction? Well, how many boxes did I circle? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, great. And how many boxes is this rectangle separated into? Well, let's just count by twos. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. So the intersection of one half and six eighths is six sixteenths. That's the intersection of red and green. Is that the same number I got over here? Booyah. We're just gonna do one more problem here and it happens to be a word problem. Game on. Read, draw, write. First, I'm going to read three-fifths of the students in a room are girls. One-third of the girls have blonde hair. One-half of the boys have brown hair. What fraction of all of the students are girls with blonde hair? Very, very cool. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and label what we know. What fraction of the girls... So we know that the girls in the room are three-fifths of the class. We know that, and I'm just going back to the problem here, you guys, three-fifths of the students in the room are girls, and then one-third of the girls have blonde hair. So what we're asking here is what fraction of the students are girls with blonde hair? What we're looking for, you guys, is three-fifths of one-third. Well, actually... I want, it's going to end up being the same. I want one third of three. Oops, that's not a three. Let's see. Uh, I want one third of three fifths. So, oh dear, I've touched the button. Um, one third of three fifths. Because three fifths represent all the girls in the class. One third of this fraction have blonde hair. You guys know that one third of three fifths is equal to one third times three fifths. Let's go ahead and just do standard algorithm first. Uh, multiplying these two fractions together. Up top, we're looking at one times three. We just multiply straight across. And then down low, we have three times five. Beautiful. What is one times three? It is three. What is three times five? It is 15. Beautiful. So we are going to model, and our attempt is to make sure that our model supports this answer. If our model supports another answer, then we've gone awry somewhere. So I'm drawing a rectangle, I'm doing my very best. This rectangle represents one whole. This is one rectangle. Hi, kids are looking at me weird. Why is she talking to her computer? I don't know, she's weirdo. Um, great, so let's first, let's show one third. I'm going to show run one third very easily by separating this rectangle into three equal parts. And then here I go shading in one third. Beautiful, so that is one third. Exciting. I am interested in, however, three-fifths of one-third. So what needs to happen next is I need to lay five rows on top of my third. So there's one, here's two, here's three, and then we have four, five. Hi, guys. I'm making a math video. I'm not talking to myself. It's like, oh, you know these math videos. Some kids are like a little nervous. They're like, why is she talking into her computer? I'm recording in the school, so I'm getting a lot of weird looks. Uh, cool. So we're looking at three fifths. That means we're looking at one, 
two, three rows. So let's go ahead and shade in. Notice you guys, I'm using a, diff a lighter stroke for my shading and I'm using a heavier stroke for my lines. It's really important that you can see the difference between your shading and your lines. If you're using the same pressure, it's gonna be a big hot mess when you're trying to pull out your intersection. So I'm gonna circle this intersection, you guys. Do you see where the purple and the green are colliding in this really wonderful way? I'm gonna circle it and then I'm gonna try to figure out, hmm, what fraction is this? Well. It's one, two, three shaded with purple and green. So that's the numerator. And the rectangle is divided into how many boxes? Well, it's three times five. So the denominator, I'm sorry, yeah, is 15. Is this number and this number the same? Indeed it is. We are geniuses. Cannot wait to practice this with you guys tomorrow. Uh, secret word is... What? Today, uh, when we were forming our social studies families, I said that I'm going to say this magic word. I'm not going to write this. You're going to have to use your memory. I said, when I say this magic word, you can go find your social studies family. What secret word was that? It's a food that I really, really love. So that is a secret word, even though I'm not writing it here. You have to think about that magic word that I use today to release you into the wild to find your social studies families. Uh, see you guys. See you guys and girls in the morning. Thanks for a great day. Bye bye for now. Mm -hmm.